Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Sega Dreamcast. And today what we're doing is we're doing an honorable mention episode. These are some of my favorite games on the Dreamcast that don't crack the top 10 list. Some of them you'll kind of understand why, but I'm sure the fact that you know Soul Calibur is coming up soon, a lot of you may disagree with me. Before we get too far involved, you're going to do me a huge favor. Go down below, hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined, we got a Patreon link down there as well if you want to support the channel. But when I think of Dreamcast, it's really hard to narrow it down to just 10 of my favorite games, and I'm probably going to show more than 10 anyway because it's my channel and I constantly break the rules that I set for myself. But there's so many good games, it was hard to really pare it down. When Soul Calibur came out as a launch game, I was absolutely blown away by how incredible this game looked. Coming from the Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, and PlayStation 1, this genuinely felt like having an arcade cabinet in my living room. It looks incredible still. I mean, I get that this is Dreamcast and it doesn't look like a modern game, but this game still holds up so well considering that this was a launch game for the Dreamcast. Getting to play this back in 1999 felt nothing short of magic. And the fighting mechanics are really good as well. The only reason this doesn't crack my top 10 and this is why you'll probably disagree with me, is that I've never loved the mechanics of Soul Calibur compared to something like Dead or Alive or Virtual Fighter or even something like Tekken. And that's just kind of, you know, down to my own feels about it. I think it is a really good game. It just doesn't make it to my top 10. But for what it's worth, it's just an outstanding release on the Dreamcast. And just to have this running in your living room, this looks incredible on a CRT. I'm playing it via VGA upscaled to 1080p with my Frame Meister. If I put this on my 4K, it also looks outstanding. No matter what you're viewing this game on, it just plays and looks so well. And that's the great thing is that it was also really fluid, especially coming from something like the PlayStation 1 or the Sega Saturn, where, you know, frame rates in the 20s were pretty much common. Getting to play something at this frame rate just felt completely different. It was responsive, it felt really easy to control, and it just moved in a way that we weren't really used to seeing. And I even love, you know, most of the backgrounds are fully rendered in 3D. You know, there are some backgrounds there, that castle. But considering we used to just get 3D characters on a 3D plane with nothing but background sprites and 2D art, this even felt more real. And that was always something that I've loved about Soul Calibur. But moving on to the next game, I can't mention Dreamcast without mentioning Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. And I get it, this game is not Dreamcast exclusive, but the amount of time I played this game when it came out must have been hours a day, seven days a week. I absolutely fell in love with this franchise, and my best friend Adam and I would just sit in my room and continually compete for high scores. And it's a game that's really stuck with me. I remember we had friends that were up in Burlington, Vermont when I lived there, and they had just, you know, become freshmen in college. And we went up there, and I got very drunk and played this game with one eye closed. It's just one of those games that I've been playing constantly. And again, it just was incredible on Dreamcast. And you know, a lot of my honorable mentions are just games that I have a lot of fond memories for. And even with my top 10, these are just things that I, you know, grew up playing and absolutely love. But even today, you know, I know there's HD remakes of these games, but for me, playing on the Dreamcast feels like how I remember learning to play Tony Hawk. I mean, don't jump into a wall, but otherwise, this is just something that makes me feel like I'm, you know, 17, 18 years old again in high school playing Tony Hawk with my friends. And I think that's the real takeaway of the Dreamcast in general is that... It was at a certain point in my life where I paid for the console, I bought the games, it was my first, you know, finger quotes, adult console, even if I hadn't quite graduated high school yet. So it's just one of those games where I can put myself in a time and place where I played this, whether it's in my room with friends, whether it's visiting friends in college, whether it's directly after that when I was doing ski films, I would bring my Dreamcast on the road with me sometimes and hook it up into TVs at houses that we rented. That's how much I love the system. Of course, it got eclipsed, you know, pretty quickly after that. But for a while, I actually traveled around with a Dreamcast in my bag. And I don't think that was probably a very productive idea, but it was a lot of fun. But again, taking a look at a completely different game is Ikaruga. Now, this is one that I would add to my top 10 list easily, except my brain just cannot handle how the game actually functions with the black and white mechanic. I can get okay at this game, but compared to other shmups, that little extra component of having a black ship and a white ship and being immune to different color projectiles depending on how you switch is just something that my fingers and my brain do not have the dexterity to 100% understand. 
I've seen Let's Plays of this game, people doing one credit continues, and it is absolutely outstanding that somebody could get that good at something like Ikaruga, but for me, I just can't handle it. And maybe that's not a fair reason to not include it on my top 10 because it is an amazing shmup. It looks beautiful, the soundtrack is incredible, the mechanics and all the different things going on is some of the best, you know, content in shmups, especially if you love the genre. But it just kind of slid outside of that top 10 for me, just for the fact that honestly, I've never once really gotten into it long enough to get good at it. But changing tracks completely again, we're going to move right over to Daytona USA 2001. It is basically a remake of the original Daytona, and if you love that game, the Dreamcast is just a better version of it. Outside of the fact that they don't have the classic Daytona song, and no, I'm not going to yell it like the singer does, I don't know why they changed that, but it was definitely to the game's detriment. But outside of that, if you enjoy racing games, if you enjoy Sega arcade games, having Daytona 2001 on the Dreamcast was absolutely perfect, because it was what I always wanted the Saturn version to be, even though the Saturn couldn't keep up technically with Model 2 hardware. Now all of a sudden we had a game that looked even better than the original Daytona on the Model 2. It played at what feels like 60 frames a second, it controlled well unless you screwed up like I just did there, and it was just another really fun arcade experience. I'm noticing that a lot of my honorable mentions are actually games that don't take very long to play. You can pick up and play them for 20 minutes, feel like you got a ton of gaming in, and then just kind of go on about your day. And that was half of what Dream cast was. Of course it has really long experiences like Skies of Arcadia or Shenmue or Resident Evil Code Veronica, but it had an equal amount of these smaller, more arcade style games and I grew up playing them in the arcade and having them on Dreamcast was just more of a good thing. But here's the deal guy, these have been my four honorable mention Dreamcast games. I have more on the list and I did narrow it down. If you want to see a second episode of the honorable mentions, if this has good stats, Maybe give me some games that you think I should check out because I haven't played every single game on the Dreamcast, but I'm happy to keep making these videos so long as you guys are watching them. So if you have some suggestions or if you want to see a part two to the Honorable Mention series, I will make it because I love making these things. Short of that, those are my top four games for the Dreamcast that just didn't make the cutoff list. They're all great, and I highly recommend each and every one of them. If you have any questions or comments, especially on suggestions for a second part in this series, leave them down below. Otherwise, I will be back again on Tuesday of next week with another brand new episode in our Dreamcast Naomi and Hikaru series. But I'll have videos on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday as well, so stay tuned for those. But like I said... You can't go wrong with any of these four games. If you like shmups, if you like racing games, if you like fighting games, I guess Tony Hawk qualifies as a sports game, although it never really feels like it to me. Pick up and play any one of these. You're going to have a ton of fun with them. But short of that, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time. I'm going to get so close to getting fourth place, and I'm going to lose it at the last possible second. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.